Let's have a look at a couple of these. Um, I just handed all that stuff back. Now, again, for those of you online, that's you're next on the list to grade all this stuff. I just wanted to get it back to the people here in class. Um, Dan is, um, I don't, you know, I can get it back to you online anytime, whereas the people in class, like, this is the last day I get it back to them before the test. So I've been kind of working on their stuff here first, but I'll come around and get yours next online. All right, now the one thing, uh, well, a couple of things on these trusses. Um, so I, I saw some things that, you know, as my uh, brother used to say, make me a little nervous. So um, let's just have a look here. Um, let's say we're at joint B just for fun. Yeah, okay. So let's say we're at joint B. And this is the first one. This is 292. Um, be a little careful about how you put those angles in when you're running those equations. Um, you know, just be sure that, you know, we get a nice free body diagram. So there would be my free body diagram. So there's B. And then on this particular one, I had 10 coming in this way because I'd already solved for BD. And I had 36 going that way because I'd already solved for BE. And then I was looking at BC and AB. And the thing I want to point out is, uh, let's see, what do we got? We got 36.27. I had uh, people when they were doing, uh, oh, let's just say sum of uh, fx equals zero. My concern regards <coughs> that angle right there. Now, if you're doing this, you know, what you're going to have here, of course, you're going to have minus fab, right? You're going to have that. And then you're going to have plus 36. And then my concern regarded that 10. And, of course, you're going to have minus, because it's going to the left, 10. And then the angle that people were putting in. I, uh, I saw a few of these, again, made me a little nervous here, because I think it might lead to some errors. Some people were putting in negative 36 point, uh, actually, it's 0.87. Okay. Now, uh, some people were putting in the angle as it uh, was measured from the positive x-axis. So if you were doing that, I had some people putting in that angle, which is 100 plus 36.87, which would be what, 216.87? Now, be careful with this. I don't like to do this. The sign here indicates that thing goes to the left, and so it's negative. That's what that means. When you start putting angles in here that are not between 0 and 90, you start you have the potential to put a second sign in your term, okay, simply based on what that angle is. So I would not do that because it complicates things a little bit. I put an angle between 0 and 90 in there. I put in an angle that is just 36.87, and that's all I do, okay? Now, that way I'll know that my trig functions here will come out positive, cosine or sine. If that angle's between 0 and 90, that'll be a positive term. Then I handle the sine on the actual force, which way it's going with the sine I put out front, okay? I wouldn't try and do that by putting uh, angles in here that are greater than 90 or that have a sign in them because you can pick up a second sign in your term and that can get you the negative of a negative or something like that and that can screw you up a little bit, okay? So just watch that when you're doing that. If you, everybody with me what I'm saying here? There, there wasn't a whole lot of people doing it, but there were a few and it made me, I just want to point that out. I would not do that. Leave that angle in there between 0 and 90. Put a sign out in front that indicates whether it's going uh, positive, which would be right or up, negative, which would be down um, or left, okay? So we good on that idea there? And I, I tried to point it out when I, rem when I saw it, you know, I, I wrote a little note on the homework so that I saw that on. Okay. Um, all right, let's look at these zero force members here that seem to come up. Let's, let's just get them all. I, I, there is a key for the zero force members that's in Moodle now. It's been turned on, so if you want to look at a key for the zero force members, they're in there. Um, these two are zero also. You know, they're just a mirror image of the other two. 
So the two that I just marked are zeros, okay? Are we good with that? Are we got any questions on that? We're good. Okay, this one's zero also for the same reason the other two are. Okay, this one, um, there's a zero right there on account of D. It's an unloaded T, and then AB is zero for the same reason that CF was. P1 is taken up by BC. There's nothing left. Uh, AB doesn't need to be there. Okay. You can see that at joint B there for AB. Okay. That one doesn't have any zero forces in it. So is everybody good with the fact there's no zero force in there? Is any uh, any questions on that? Let's try that. Good with that. Questions? Okay. Okay. This one you track them through. So BC is zero. If it's zero, it's gone. So you can go to joint B and see that BD is zero. When BD is zero, it's gone. So you can go to joint D and find that uh, DE is zero. You could start up an F and you'll see that FG is zero. But when you go down to joint G, you cannot conclude that EG is zero because there's that load there at G. EG is actually gonna have to pick up the vertical component of that load. So EG is not zero there. Yeah. So, um, can you not use that uh, formula you had to determine if it's static or determinant to get out of this altogether, or do you have to? Mm. Because this one, this one solved. Oh, <laughs> start pulling them out and doing the formula to see if it's statically determinant. Or? Well, actually, I just did. I just did it right. Counted all the joints and the members, and then ran that that function to see if it was static or determinant. And then mm -hmm. the one that that's wrong. Says it is. Mm. Well, I never really used that approach to you know see if it's statically determinate with the what is it the two j two m equals two j minus three or something. M plus three. Oh. Equals 2J okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I mean. I, I'm not, I, I can't answer that one on the fly. I don't know. I understand kind of where you're going with that, but be aware when you start pulling out zero force members, sometimes in so doing, you remove joints. You know, if you take BC out, C is really no longer a, a significant joint. I, um, so I, I don't I don't have a quick, uh, you know, answer that I'm confident in for your question. Yeah, I think the way to do it is more to look at it in the vein I'm looking at it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. You have to do one or, yeah, you can't do half of one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So, anything else on this uh, homework that you got back that? You have questions on it? We'll do okay with that. Okay. Let's see. Do you guys want to look at the review then? Would that be the thing to do next? Yeah. Review. Oh, that, that's sections. That's right. We better do the sections because. That could be on the test. Now, I posted solutions for those section problems, too. So uh, be aware of that. Um, and um, it, it's just right in there. So the, the, uh, the summary of these, there were the solutions, the keys to the, these problems are in 
are, are in Moodle, okay? And they're posted there. All right, so why don't we have a look? So this is for the section problems. I didn't want to pick these up because I just want you to have them, you know, if you want to be looking it over for the final. Um, all right, 311. Uh, what you want to do on these is find the reactions. Okay, so that's always the first step when you're doing a, a method of sections problem is to find the reactions. Okay, so when you find the reactions on this one, you're going to get um, RF is 27.5 right there. And RA is 22.5. So these are due on Monday. When you, you know, when you take the test, you can just turn them in. Okay, so those are the reactions. Now, what you would do then is cut through the truss where you want to find the unknowns. And as it turns out, you're finding C, E, C, F, and D, F. And so that lends itself to a cut just right, right down there. Okay, that cuts through all three of them. Now, being as you're starting out with a, um, um, uh, the reactions and, you know, you know those already, and now you've cut through three members, they become three independent forces now for which you'll write up equations. So the free body diagram would look like this. Now, that's all solid material there. So, you know, that's how I think about that. I think about that like a solid rectangle, okay? So I've not cut through any of these members, so I just think of that as being a rectangle as shown. Then acting on that rectangle, I've got a number of forces that I would want to show. And they look like this. So I got 22.5, like so, 22.5. I've got uh, that 20 at D. And then in addition, I've got these new ones that the, the members that I have cut through are now known or unknown forces. And they look like that. I'm assuming they're all in tension, which may or may not be a good assumption, but like I said, that's how I was taught, so that's for whatever reason, that's how I still do it. So FC, CF, and then uh, what, CE? Looks like I got one of those mislabeled. This should be DF here. Like so. Okay, so I start with that. And see, that's just a statics problem. I've got two applied forces on there, plus I've got the three that I don't know, and I just need to work through and solve it out. So that's really about all that's going on there. So just think of that as being a fairly straightforward statics problem. Um, you know, there's a variety of equations you could use. You know, I always just do the easiest one first. In this case, it's sum of, uh, sum of Fy equals zero. And that will be, what, 22.5 up. And then I've got minus 20 down. And then I've got that angle there, 36.87. So minus sine 36.87 times the unknown FCF. And the sum of those three things is zero. And I can work through the calculations on that. And I get FCF is 4.17 positive. So positive in this case means tension. You all okay with that? Yeah, sure. You could, yeah, you cut it and you take one whole side or the other. The rules on the cuts is the cut has to go all the way through the truss and you cannot cut through joints because that's an ambiguous cut. It doesn't, you can't really define which way forces act if you cut through a joint. Okay. Okay. okay, and then now I'm probably going to need a moment. I see those uh, two unknowns up there at C, so I think I'd probably take moments about C and set that equal to zero. And that's going to be pretty straight up. I got 22.25, uh, and that's going to be uh, 
positive, right? And that's going to be clockwise. So that'll be minus, because it's clockwise, 22.5 newtons, or kilonewtons probably, right? Yeah, kilonewtons times a moment arm of 2 meters. And then I've got on down below here, I got DF. So that's three because the, the length there is three meters vertical down. And then I mix that with the X force, the FDF. And then I can solve for FDF. And that'll come out to be 15 kilonewtons. And that'll be tension. Again, a positive answer. And then, okay, so I got two of them now. I got CF and DF. And I always prefer force equations to moment equations, generally speaking. So I go sum of FX equals zero. And then I just would solve for the last one, which is CE. So I'm going to get FCE uh, plus that cosine of that angle. That angle is 36.87. And then uh, what do I got for CF? Is that... Um, that's 4.17, right? 4.17. That would be positive because it's in tension, so it's pulling. And then I've got FDF, which I just found, so that'd be plus 15. So I could then solve for FCE, easy enough. And that is 18.33, but that's a negative. So that's not tension as I show, it's uh, compression. So that right there is the basics of the method of sections. You want to find the reactions first, because if you don't, you'll have too many unknowns to really handle the problem. Then you want to make a cut through whatever member you want to solve for, and just take one side of the cut or the other, so one whole side or the other, whatever you don't cut through. I just think of that as being like a solid object, as I'm showing there highlighted in yellow. And then the members that I do cut through are now pushing or pulling on that object. Okay. So that's what I end up with there. And then I just got a little bit of a statics problem there to solve. Okay. You doing all right with that? So there we go with that one. Now that's kind of the starter one, okay? Now let's go to the last one because it's the next in difficulty. We want to find something B8, BG, this is 313, okay? So same sort of drill here, you want to find the reactions. So I've got the reactions there. Um, 8.09 and 6.91. So that, those are the reactions. Let's see. Got something more than that going on here. What do I got? Okay. So we find the reactions. Okay, 8.09 on the left, 6.91 on the right. Find the angles of the members you're cutting through. And then there's different ways you can solve this. Um, kind of the fancy way that I was showing you is to locate point I out there. Because when you make that cut, what you've got, you got three unknowns. Whenever you cut through a member, it becomes an unknown. So I've got red arrowheads on those things now. Those are forces. What I'm doing is I'm pulling on that triangular panel there or pushing, depending on what, you know, whether I got tension or compression. So I think of this as being a solid object. I've got the reaction there of 8.09. I've got the applied force at H and 8. And then I've got those three members that I've cut through are now forces pulling on that thing or pushing. I'm showing them all pulling. I've got the angles up there. If I want to find BG, one quick way I can do it is intersect FBC with um, FGH. FGH is horizontal, so what I could do is just take the slope of FBC and project it down the 2.4 meters. So what I've got there is BC has a slope of a rise of 1.6 to a run of 
Is that two? Yes, I think it is. Okay, so that's the slope there of BC. So BC has a rise of 1.6 over a run of two. I want to know what it's going to take to make it go up 2.4, and I want to know what that x value is. So I can cross multiply. I'll get 1.6x is equal to 4.8. Divide through by that, I'll get x equals 3. So that's the distance that I am from this point because I'm going 2.4 down from there. So that's 3 meters. So this dimension here is 1 meter. So this is the quick way to do that if I just want to solve for BG, uh, you know, quickly. I can intersect the other two unknowns, BC and GH, and they'll intersect at point I. That's one meter over. Then once I've got that, I can take a moment about I. That's what I could do. Okay. So if I'm over there at I, which is right about here, and that's one meter right there, I've got 8.09 kilonewtons times one meter. I've got minus eight kilonewtons. That's the supplied load. One and two gets me three meters. And then I've got sine of 52 times BG. That'll get me the downward component doing that. That'll get me a clockwise moment. So that looks a lot like a negative there. And that would have a moment arm of what? I've got three again on that, don't I? Three meters. And then the cosine of 50.2 times uh, BG is that horizontal thing. That's coming around clockwise too. So that'll get a minus. And that is 2.4 meters away. Okay, so there's the moment equation I could write up. I could work through that and I'll get negative 4.14, which is compression. Doing all right with that? Okay. So that's one way to do that. Now, you don't have to do that. I mean, you don't have to f do that intersection if you're not comfortable with it. If you're not, you can just go sum of mg, which would be that green point over there on the right. That's where bg and gh intersect. Based on that, I would have, what, 8.09 times 4 clockwise is negative. And I'd have 8 times the offset of 2 counterclockwise positive. And then I can handle BC. So I'd have cosine 38.7 FBC. That's the X component. 2.4 moment arm. Okay, about G and then sine. And you know what? I've got a little bust on that sine, don't I? That should be a negative right there. There's a negative, and then I got sine 38.7 FBC times 2 meters. That's this component. We, both of those are coming around clockwise, so they're both negative. That'll get me FBC, which is 5.24 compression. Once I've got that, I could do a sum of FY, set that equal to 0, and I could work through that and get to FBG. Okay. So a couple steps on that one. First one to find BC and the second one to find BG. So that's how you could do that. You could do it either way. Okay. Questions on that? Okay. All right, then the last one's the trickiest of the bunch, I think. This, this requires a little bit of strategy here. Um, there's different ways to do that. There's a number of check answers depending on how you did it. I've got the angles in there and then, you know, intermediate answers because there's so many ways to do this. I just put those down so whatever track you're on, you can make sure you're on the right one. You know, you just... You know how this can get a little frustrating if you bust something on the first thing you do and then you get off on the wrong track and everything. 
messes everything up. So that's that just answers there to be sure whatever you're doing, you're you're you know you're doing okay with it. All right, the basic uh, deal on this is to find FFG, and what you'll see here is if you make kind of a standard cut, you've got four unknowns. So cutting through FFG, you've got four unknowns, and that can often be a problem because you only got three equations of status. So that's not always a problem. That depends on the situation, but in this case, it is. You, you can't just use that side. cut. What's that? Cut on the other side. Yeah, on the other side of F, or... Oh, on the other side. Of the Never mind. Yeah, I, you're yeah. still gonna get four. Yeah. Like, no, because I think the other thing is the one that I should cut about. Yeah, yeah. This one is kind of tricky because you know, any way you cut, I think you're gonna end up with four. I think. Um, so there's different ways to do this. I think the thing to do is to slide your cut over there. You only have three unknowns, and you can find. Um, whichever, you know, all those three or whatever ones you need, and then you can go back to your original cut. So this would be cut two and maybe cut one. That might be the way to go at this, okay? But this one is a little bit, uh, it's got a lot of stuff going on with it. Um, okay, so that cut has four unknowns. So you got to figure out what to do, all right? So this is just... Uh, you know, a little bit more advanced one here. So we make that cut there. So I just slid that over. So the quickest way I know to do this is to make the cut that I'm showing. So instead of going through FG initially, slide over a little bit and go through CG, EG, and EF. When you do that, you can take moments about G and you can solve for EF. Okay? So with the cut I'm using there, and I've got arrowheads to indicate the forces that I'm creating. I can go about moment about G, and I'll have 8 times 0.8. That's this one and that. Clockwise is a negative. That's a negative there. Then I got the reaction, which you needed to find, and that's 7.73 times 2 meters, 0.8 and 1.2. That's positive because that's coming around counterclockwise. And then I've got this angle here. And I'll go cosine 31 times FFE times 2 meters. That's this guy here. And then sine 31 times FFE times 1 meter. They're both positive because, or excuse me, they're both negative because they're both clockwise. Run the numbers and you'll get FFE 4.06 tension. And then the easiest way I can think to do it next is just to go down to F and cut it out as a method of joints. That's the quickest way I know to do this one. Um, so the next thing you could do here, and you know, there's more than one ways to, many ways to do this, but you can just go right there, pull that joint out and do a sum of Fy on it. If you've got EF is 4.06, you can get FFG because it's the only other Y unknown in there. So we are allowed to join the method with the section method of that. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, because joints is a special case of sections. You're just sectioning out a joint. Okay. All right. So that'd be the way to, to the quickest way I know to do that. Okay. All right, so that's uh, that's that homework. Okay. Now the review. Um, let's see what we got. We got the list. So couples are pure moments. No associated force. You do not need a moment arm. They have the same magnitude anywhere on the object. Okay, distributed loads, the area of the loading diagram is the total force. You apply the force of the centroid. For a rectangle is the midpoint, for a triangle is the third point. Okay, resultants, just be sure you know how to do those. I've, I've had some, you know, I know we've been doing so much equilibrium. There's been times when I put resultants on these tests and people just forgot, okay? <laughs> so just, just have a look at it, you know, it, it's... Uh, basically, you're doing some of Fx, some of Fy. You're not doing equilibrium with resultants. You're finding the, 
the result of applying a force system to an object. So you're doing sum of fx, sum of fy, sum of moments about some point. The resultant magnitude is the square root of sum of the squares. The angle is the arctan of the y over the x. You can also find offset distances so that the force will cause the moment. You all remember that? We had a few problems with that. Um, 230, 240s in there, I think, is where they were. Okay. All right, with that. Free body diagrams. Remember, just get tunnel vision with that. Just look at each support and put in forces that will prevent the motion that the force prevents. Okay. Don't think too much about it. Just get the forces in there that represent each support. Okay. 2D equilibrium, start with a good free body diagram. That's really important. You got three equations to use. You probably want to start with a sum of moments equation about a point with two unknowns directed through it. That way you can solve for the third unknown. Dimension the x and y dimensions from this point to all the forces and reactions. Remember to include moment arms on your moments. 3D equilibrium, you got six equations. With that, you can use a 2D approach or a vector approach. Trusses method of joints. Um, members are in tension or compression. One or the other, you're doing equations for the joints. Zero force members, you can write up force equations and prove out that a member is zero. Here are the common configurations of zeros that I've, I know about, shown right there. And then the method of sections we just went through. Do we got any questions on these for starters? Yeah. Is there anything we should memorize, like the center of the triangle, for instance? Look at your formula sheet. I, I think everything you need is on the formula sheet. I, I've got those centroids on there. Okay. And, you know, really the equations for this, the, the resultant's got equations, but equilibrium is just some of fx, some of fy, and some of moments are zero, and that's really about it. I mean, um, you know, I, I've got the, the, the trusses formula on there and all that, you know, so there really isn't a whole lot of equations on this one, and I think they're all on the sheet. You can have a look at it, but... Other questions on this? Yeah. Um, there's a question that we did in class just the other day. It was on page 540. Uh -huh. um, and when we took, we added a point H and then took a moment about it. Yeah. And we used force FBC, but we decided there was also a force BD, but that wasn't included in the moment. And I was confused as to why it wasn't done 540. Okay, 540, is yeah. that, that's like out of, the, out of the notes? Yeah, out of the notes. Okay, why don't we get to that, but first let's look at, let's just look at these, because we're a little short of time. Let's just, let's just go through, let's just look at these conceptually real quick. Okay, that one, what am I trying to test on this one? Yeah, doing the uniform loads, right? I mean, you know, I don't come up with this stuff out of the clear blue sky, right? I mean, there's certain topics I want to hit, I test you on those topics, right? So I'm definitely going to test you. At some point, you'll see distributed loads. So this thing, you have to cut it up into a rectangle and a triangle. Plus, there's a couple in there. Remember, no moment arms on couples. And this solution will be posted if you need it, OK? <coughs> OK. Now, do you all know what that is? That's an equilibrium problem. You all know how to do that? Have you gotten tired of me telling you how to do it? Maybe. But let's see. If, let's make sure you can do it, though, okay? Because that's pretty fundamental statics right there. So what do I do? I take those dimensions. I break them up into x's and y's. I get myself a nice picture. And then I get x and y dimensions from c, because there's two unknowns there, to the one unknown I'm going to solve for with a moment equation. And I get all that stuff set up first, and then I run the numbers. And I'm saying this stuff because when I graded the homework, you were getting the right answers, but some of the methodologies were a little bit um, scattered. I guess that's normal when you're learning it, but now you've learned it, so apply what, what you've been taught, okay? Do that. that. That's the cleanest way to do this that I know. Okay, then write up a moment equation, then do sum of fx, sum of fy.
Okay, that's a truss. Um, we've done a few trusses now, right? There is a very distinct method for doing that. Get that figured out because you're definitely going to have a truss on this test. I mean, we spent enough time on them. So just, and you know, and, and there ain't no way I can make a tricky truss up, at least not for method of choice. It's just, it's, it is what it is. So learn how to do it and apply it. And again, don't do shortcuts. Get, get me, you know, get the reactions, get the angles, get free body diagrams of the joints and just go through with some of FX and some of FY. And that's how you do them. Okay. Now this thing's a little tricky, and this is one of those, you know, how I throw things in here, they're a little bit tricky. Okay, that, that see that panel there with an X through it? There's no way you can use method of joints to get through that. Okay? So I, I can't get you a problem where you can't solve it with method of joints. So be aware of that. Okay? So you've got to do method of joints on this one. I think you're just going to cut through that yeah. nice and clean. What's that? Your method of sections, you said method of joints. You can't do method of joints, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is a method of sections. Oh, okay, I misspoke. So this is, you have to do this with sections. Um, the first one's pretty straight up. Just cut right through there and take a moment about E, I think. This one gets a little tricky, though, finding PM. This is called a K truss. Now, you see any zeros in there? Yeah, mark them, find them, mark them. Then they're not there anymore. Once something's zero, it, it, it's, you don't deal with it anymore. It's like it's not even there. And there's different ways you can solve that thing. Um, you can go with one of those trickier cuts, or you can do it with two cuts. You know, it just depends on the situation. I can't generalize, you know, on, on how to do all of these, but but finding that zero is kind of an important step on the solution, I think. Okay. All right. So I just want to go through those quick. You'll have, you know, I'll, that solution is already up there. I think you can. I'm pretty sure it's up. If not, I'll check. I'll get it up in Moodle. So, you know, go over the review and be sure you can do this stuff, especially that method of joints. I mean, that's going to be 30 points. If you can do that, you know, pretty pretty low-hanging fruit if you can do that stuff, okay? So just be sure you know that. Uh, you know, be sure you can do equilibrium. Um, let's see here. Let's see if we can answer that question here in our minute. That was a truss, right? And that was sections, was it? Um, yeah, we made a cut in this, 540. 540, is it this this guy? Oh, uh, you just had it, yeah. Um, yeah, that one. Okay, and the question was, why didn't we include which? So when we make that cut and we do a moment about H, which about is a H. newly oh, created over, Yeah, out there to the thing, left of A. We are solving for fourth BC, but what doesn't get applied into the moment equation is anything dealing with fourth BC, which is also going through that cut. Well, I think we were solving for BC. Or sorry, BD. BD. Me. So right. We're solving for BC. We right. include that in the moment, but we don't include BD, right. which is also a part of that. But I'm confused as to why that's not part of the moment equation. If that's some. It goes stuff. right through H. Oh, we found H purposely so BD would go through it. Okay, so we can eliminate it because of H yeah. being on that. Line. Which was the whole point of setting that up in the first place okay. to get to get BD. BD. Yeah, because it goes through it. And that's why we did the slope thing to figure out where to put H, to get B, D, B, uh, B out of there. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. All right, yeah. All right, we're okay. So look for that stuff on Moodle, okay? I've also got the solution to those method of sections problems.